ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ومن يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد Allah Allah Ta'ala Fil Surat Al-A'la Bel tu'thiruna al-hayat al-dunya Wal akhiratu khayrun wa abqa Allah says what means But you prefer the life of this world Well that hereafter is better and more lasting قول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحب دنياه الدر بآخرة من أحب آخرته الدر بالدنيا فآثر ما يبقى على ما يفنى. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, whoever loves his worldly life will suffer in his hereafter, and whoever loves his worldly life is Whoever loves his hereafter will suffer in his worldly life. Therefore, choose what is everlasting over what is passing away. And the Prophet also said, Ala in the dunya ma'luna, ma'luna ma fiha. Illa dhikrullah wa ma wala wa alim amuta'allama. The Prophet ﷺ said that, Lo, indeed, the world, the dunya, is cursed. And all of it, everything inside of it, is cursed. Except for the remembrance of Allah. And what aids in that remembrance. And the knowledge of the person, the alim, a muta'allima, or the one that is seeking knowledge. Inshallah, in the second half, will share some reminders, some reflections on these statements, inshallah. In alhamdulillah, wa rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam, ala ashraf al-anbiya wa mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man thabuhum bi ihsan al-iliyam al-deen. Here, after a while being gone. The question may arise why the subject of Hubbuddun, love of the worldly life? One of the reasons that I chose a topic like this is in all of my own studies and my, uh, I don't want to say teaching, but my, in my sharing of what I've learned with others, one of the things that you find is you know, the chain of events or causes that lead to amrad al the diseases of the heart. Amongst the most primary, the most basic causes of diseases of the heart is hubadunya, is love of the worldly life. When you look at things like anger and things like that, etc., just to give you an example, anger, the scholars, they say, comes out of a sense of pride and a sense of ujjab, a sense of self-amazement. And those, they find their roots in the hubadunya. As I was reflecting on the subject itself, And we all, we've heard, we've, we've read, we've even talked about or thought about hubbud dunya, love of the world, because it's not uncommon to find in the Quran and the statements of the Prophet ﷺ, etc. But yet and still, we all suffer from these diseases of the heart to one degree or another. Why? When you talk about a chain of events or a chain of causes that lead to an outcome, we talk about how hubba dunya leads to these other diseases of the heart, but what leads to hubba dunya? I was thinking about this. 
obviously, the most basic, the most fundamental belief, conviction, and lesson that we have in our deen is la ilaha illallah. Nothing deserves to be worshipped except for Allah. Hubb dunya comes out of our weakness in asserting and affirming that fact. What do I mean? If we're honest and sincere, 100% when we say la ilaha illallah, then when Allah says, as it is here, well, akhiratu khairun wa Verily the hereafter is better and more lasting. Yani, That's the end of the question. If we believed in Allah and what He says to us the way we claim, we would believe in Him like we believe in gravity. Like we believe in cause and effect. As I was driving just now, I was reflecting, it's a long story, but yesterday, I believe it was, I had come home from, uh, it, was, uh, it was my birthday. So in the morning, I'm sitting, I'm having breakfast, my wife made me a beautiful breakfast, and I'm sitting enjoying my breakfast, I get a phone call, and they're asking me, if I can go with, be with a family whose mother is about to be taken off of life support. This is actually my day off. Aside from being my birthday, it was my day off. <laughs> but the Imam was previously disposed with family matters. I, I know this. And so he wasn't available. I was the on-call Imam apparently. <laughs> so I had to make a few phone calls, rearrange my schedule, and go out and visit. So my birthday, I'm thinking about the day I was born and things like that, etc. I'm going to stand with a family who's possibly witnessing the last moments of their mother's life. So I'm there with them, you know, we're, we're, we're supporting them just by our presence, etc. We give, provide a few reminders, etc. And so I come home. Needless to say, I'm thinking a lot, and it was a very, I mean, it's a very strange day to be thinking about life and death literally in the same moment. And so I'm sitting, I'm standing on my balcony, and I'm recording a reminder uh, for Twitter. And I'm talking about strange days and the turn of events and things like that. Wallahi, wallahi, as I'm in the middle of the recording, I hear the loudest screech of tires and a crashing of metal just the other side of my wall. We live in a development of wall, but just between us and the freeway. Huge crash, billows of smoke. As I'm recording a reminder about the turn of days, there's an event happening just the other side of that wall. stomping on those brakes to try and stop that semi, which is what it sounded like. This is the way we need to be when it comes to what Allah tells us. When He says to us, in the, And the hereafter is better and more lasting. The way we are when we're driving and we see something cross our road and we immediately, instinctually, slam on the brakes. Why do we do that? We do that because we're expecting them to stop us. We're counting on the fact that they're going to slow our progression and stop us from coming in contact with whatever is in front of us. That is how we need to be with what Allah tells us. We need to trust in the words of Allah in that way. If we did that, then we would be nearly free from sin. Because when Allah said anything at all, we would take it to heart the way the companions took it to heart. There was almost no hesitation in the companions. When they heard something, they took it on board. I'll give you this example and then I'll close on this inshallah. To give you an example of what I'm talking about. Many of us, we know 
the ayah that we mentioned in the beginning. Ya ladina amnu itakullaha haqqa tuqati. Fear Allah as much as he should be feared. When the companions first heard this ayah, they were very, very worried. Because, unlike us, they heard that ayah, they immediately got worried because they, were, they, they said, we cannot fear Allah according to his right, according to the level that he deserves. So they were nervous for themselves. And not long afterwards, another ayah came down, down saying, Yeah, you have the deen of Amir al Oh, you who believe fear Allah, Mestatatum, as much as you're able. Allah lessened the burden of them because he understood the panic that they were feeling. And he wanted to reassure them that it's according to the abilities. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وصا. Allah will not burden a soul or place a responsibility upon an individual greater than they have the capacity to bear. But this is the way they interacted with the words of Allah. When they came down, they didn't worry about Fulan and Fulan. They worried about themselves and what it meant to them. Were they living up to what that ayah was asking them for? This is the thing about Huba Dunya. As important as it is, and as, as basic and elemental as it is to many of the diseases of the heart, we have to follow the chain of events backwards a little bit more and re examine our own faith in Allah. How truly rock solid is it? How do we engage when we hear the reminder of Allah? Do we hear it and we, we, we parrot the words and we, you know, we repeat la ilaha illallah, etc., but it's just words falling off of our tongues? Or do we do like the companions? And every time we hear a reminder, we worry about ourselves and are we in line with what it's asking of us? Do we trust in the promise of Allah and in His, in His, in His promise of reward and His promise of punishment the way we trust in our breaks? That we trust in gravity. That we don't even think about it. We trust that it will be there. That it will behave as we expect. If I pick up a pen and I let it go, there's no question in my mind it's going to fall. That's exactly the same way we need to be when it comes to Allah. When He tells us something, we need to not be, eh, maybe this, maybe that, that, that. And yeah, we put all of these different explanations and excuses and etc. It needs to be absolutely crystal. When he tells us that there's a promise of reward, we should yearn after that as a certainty. When he threatens us with the possibility of loss and punishment, we should fear that with the same sort of fear as we would if someone was standing in front of you with a gun. But we don't. That's not a failure on Allah's part. That's a weakness on ours. We've turned our religion into a matter of convenience. MashaAllah, many of us during Ramadan, we make our religion a bit of a priority. But as soon as the time is over, Many of us, we leave much of what we were doing during Ramadan and we head back to the ways that we were doing before. We become almost deaf to the same reminders that are there that we were paying more heed to during Ramadan. Many of us, we know people that maybe they struggle with cigarettes or something like that, etc. During Ramadan, they find the discipline to avoid the cigarettes all day long. We know this. We know these people that are there. They're in the parking lot or they're out front of the building. They make their iftar on what? On marble. But they were able to withhold for those 14, 15 hours. And as soon as the month is done, breakfast, lunch, and dinner marble. Or worse whatever the vice may be, that they leave for Ramadan, mashallah. 
but they didn't truly leave it. So may Allah aid us in believing in him the way that he deserves. Fearing Allah as he has a right to be feared, and he but according to our abilities. According to our abilities. May he grant us success in this coming month and all that follow, inshallah. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذاب النار وقل قل هذا واستغفر الله لي والمؤمنين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وقيم صلاة